Friday through Monday, and I'm like, I'm chilling out again, so I'm feeling better. I hope that you guys do as well, <laughs> uh, although we don't have our break until uh, next Friday, so we'll get there soon. Uh, my name is Carrie Fuberly, and I am an instructor here in the Political Science Department at VCU. I'm also your experiential learning, learning coordinator, which basically means that uh, about half of my time is spent helping you all find experiential learning opportunities. This is internships, student research, uh, helping with study abroad, anything that makes your educational experience here at VCU a little bit more practical and uh, real life oriented. Those are the types of things that I'm trying to encourage and uh, help you guys get. So what we're doing today is talking about internships. Um, I will start by providing a brief introduction. And then we've got a couple of uh, great uh, guests here to talk about different uh, aspects of the internship, internship search. Um, this is Melinda Snyder. Uh, she covers politics and law, I believe, uh, within career services. Uh, we've got Natasha romero Moscala, who's a junior pre-law student, currently interning with the Richmond Circuit Court. And last but not least, we have Vanessa Vargas, who's also a junior uh, transfer student, who will talk about summer internships that she did with the Education Trust and Senator Kate's office. Um, so, um, just as a remote note, uh, we're not going to cover absolutely everything you need to know about internships today. We're going to cover essentially the basics and where to get started. Um, uh, essentially, my goal here is to talk about how you can find an internship that's right for you and uh, help you to be proactive in including internships essentially in your academic plan. So um, that's where we're headed. Um, please interrupt with questions. My goal here is to have us talk for no more than 30 minutes and then to do a Q&A. But if you have a question that comes up while we're talking, please just let us know. This is not super formal. Uh, we, and we are here for you. At least Melinda and I. <laughs> we're just grateful to have our, our student guests in. Okay, I need to wander over here to do two slides for an introduction, and uh, um, then we'll turn it over to our panel. Okay. So, um, many internships nowadays are actually paid, but not all of them are. And so the question I always like to start with is essentially, why should you do work that you're not getting paid for? Why should you bother to do an internship? And essentially, I like to focus on three different things. Uh, the first and main reason is that it's a great way to explore your career options. Uh, you guys don't know exactly what you want to do, or let me rephrase. Uh, it is normal for you all know, not to know exactly what you want to do with your life. And the best way to figure out what is actually right for you is to try a bunch of different things. So um, an internship is a great way to get you know, exposure to different aspects of careers in political science and to see, hey, do you like this? Do you not like this? Uh, I certainly did a couple of internships where I was like, oh, that's not what I want. <laughs> and I changed my mind once, but um, you know, it's uh, the best way to get a feel for the job. Um, it's also great to put on your resume. Um, any experience, any work experience that you have is going to look good on your resume. If you're a server at a restaurant or a barista, if you are working in a shop, that is all excellent experience that you definitely want to talk about. Um, and uh, when we talk resumes some future day, I can explain why. But what makes you more competitive, what adds that extra something to your resume, is something that's specifically related to politics or the field that you're interested in going into. So this is essentially that extra add-on, that extra plus that's really going to make you stand out. And last but not least, sometimes you have to do a little unpaid work to get yourself ready to do the paid work. Sometimes it's just about making those connections through these different opportunities that opens up uh, actual paid experience opportunities for you, either as an intern or actual jobs. So um, these are all the reasons why I think it's good to do an internship. But um, the way to get an internship isn't to just dive in and be like, let me go find jobs, let me go find internships, let me just see what's out there. Uh, you really do need to think through first what you actually want. And this doesn't mean you need to figure out your entire life and have a really specific career plan, but you need to search with purpose. Um, I have been uh, meeting with employers around town to try and create internships for students, talk to them about what they actually look for in employees, things along those lines. And basically there have been two things that everyone has consistently told me. First, um, they've all said, uh, you know, what really makes people stand out in the hiring process 
it's not necessarily what's on your resume because you guys are applying for internships. You don't have a lot on your resumes, and that's okay, and that's normal. But what makes you stand out is something that indicates that you want this job, this internship, not just a job or an internship. You need to be able to explain why you're applying for a specific position, why you're right for it, or why you're at least interested in that area. So that's why the first couple of questions you need to start asking yourself is, well, what do I actually like? What am I interested in? Again, you don't need to figure it all out, but maybe like narrow it down to I'm interested in international stuff or domestic stuff. I want to do policy or maybe I'm interested in a campaign. And, you know, I knew I was interested in international affairs really early on. And actually that's what I did my internships in, but I didn't take my first steps down the career path doing that. It's okay to branch out and explore different things with internships as well, as long as you have a story, as long as you have a reason for it. Um, the other thing to think through is, well, what do you actually like doing? Do you love working in groups? Uh, do you like sitting at a computer and doing research? Um, if it's the latter, you don't want to apply for a public relations job. If it's the former, if you love working in groups, you might not really want that research internship. There might be something else that's better for you. So thinking through what you care about, uh, what you want to learn about, and what you're good at, or at least what you like in terms of uh, skills, those are the first two steps. And equally important, you do need to start thinking through the logistics. How much time can you actually spend on an internship? How is this going to fit into your overall academic calendar? Um, do you need uh, to be paid for the, the internship? Can you afford to apply for those unpaid experiences? Or do you need to find something that, can be, uh, that is going to give you a salary? Or at least a stipend? And uh, do you want to be in person or remote? Um, there are lots of different opportunities for different types of positions, depending on what your actual interests are. Um, you might not be able to find absolutely everything that you're interested in on the logistics category, so it does help to prioritize. Um, but we'll, I'll talk through that a little bit more in a moment. Um, let's see, questions? All right, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Melinda. We'll talk a little bit about search options. I'm going to stand because I'm going to And I'm going to click. Perfect. Okay, that sounds great. All right. um, I'm just saying, succeeding. Um, so my name is Melinda Snyder and I work in VCU Career Services. How many of you have been into our office or utilized an appointment with our office? Okay, good number of people, awesome. Um, so how do we fit in with this process of looking for internships and, and kind of figuring things out overall? Um, one, we can talk about career exploration. So as Professor Coberly mentioned, it's really important for you to have a sense of maybe what you want to do or at least express that to the employers when you speak with them and make them think that you really want their opportunity. So if you want help fleshing out, like, what are the things I'm interested in? Um, what does that look like? Where do I go with this? We can have conversations around career exploration, and internships are absolutely a wonderful way to figure out what we like to do and what we don't like to do, just like she mentioned. So we can have those conversations. The other thing that we spend time doing a lot on is job and internship resources. Um, and so one of the big components of this is translating and communicating the skills you're developing while you're a VCU student onto your search document. That's resumes, cover letters, and through the interview process. And so we can help you with all of that in our office. Um, it's about thinking about the skills that you're developing that are going to be relevant to that employer. So that's part of making them think that you want their opportunity is customizing your documents to make it very clear why you're qualified and why you specifically are interested in them. We have resume guides on our website. We're not going to go into those in depth today because that's a whole additional presentation. Um, but the one thing I do want to also point out is that if you're applying to federal opportunities, many of those opportunities require a separate resume format that's the federal resume format. So just something to have on your radar that if you're going to be applying to both federal and non-federal, you're probably going to need two different versions of your resume. We also have cover letter guides. Um, so this is your, the perfect opportunity to explain to a potential employer why you specifically want them. And you don't want to say that you're interested in an internship to get experience because everybody wants to get experience. But what is it about that particular opportunity and that particular employer that um, speaks to you, that engages you, and being able to tell your story through that process can be really valuable. So we can absolutely help with that part of the process. And then if you're thinking about going on to graduate school, how might work impact that? How might getting an internship impact what you think you want to do for graduate school? We can have conversations around that and just short and long-term career goals overall. And then the big thing about um, career services is Handshake. And that's going to be our online portal where you can do a lot of different things with the, with the tool. How many of you have been in Handshake? Okay, almost everyone at least seems like they know what this is. 
So there's lots of different things that you can do in the, the tool. Um, you can schedule with our office, you can search for opportunities and events like our career fairs that we have, our internship fairs. Um, in addition, this is one place that you can look and search for opportunities. If an employer contacts our office and says they want to hire a VCU student, for equity purposes, we're going to require that they post an opportunity in Handshake. Sometimes the departments can have other processes and things like that, so they may have opportunities that they can distribute just to political science majors. But for our sake, if someone contacts us, that's where they're going to be. Um, and sometimes I'll hear from students, well, I went into Handshake and I looked for jobs and I didn't see anything, so I never went back. Jobs come up and down all of the time. Internships are up and down all of the time. And I think that's a, a point in here too, is that there's not a specific timeline when organizations always look for interns. This does vary because we fall on an academic semester by semester schedule, but employers don't always work that way. So that's something to think about is that you should be going in. I would say, if you're like, I definitely want an internship, I'd be going in at least once a week to check what's in there. Uh, so Handshake is one place to look. It does take employers an extra step to post Handshake. So if I'm an employer that's really desirable, that everyone knows their name, it's name recognition, um, a lot of the large government agencies, things like that, I might not post a handshake because I'm just getting applications on my own. I'm popular, people know about me. So you also want to start generating a list of employers that just interest you. And I recommend keeping a spreadsheet or a Google Sheet where you list those employers and their careers pages, and you're also going out once a week to check those opportunities. Some of the employers also have like notify me about opportunities. You can do proactive email communications. Like the State Department's awesome for that. Um, and some of the other government agencies have those, that ability too. Um, but you want to make sure that you are aware when those things get posted. So checking Handshake is one place to look. Checking individual company websites is another place to look. Um, or organizations, agencies, and creating a systemized process to do that. Every week I'm going to go check these. Um, and then leveraging those connections and the people that you know. 70 to 80 percent of positions aren't posted anywhere online. And that's tough, because I know everyone's like, I want to sit my computer and hit send on these applications. It's like the easier thing to do. Um, but really trying to leverage um, who you might know, and that's a conversation that we can have in our office. Um, I know that you're working to develop some of those connections and things like that. So just don't underestimate the value of making those connections and, and having those conversations. Those are the main things that I wanted to cover to make sure that you knew a little bit about what we can offer. Um, I would say that we are definitely a resource if you need help with starting your resume, reviewing your resumes, cover letters, and having these kind of bigger, like, what do I do type of conversations around career paths. Um, you can connect with us in a variety of ways. Um, we do appointments, um, either virtually or in person, Monday through Friday, and then we also do drop-ins. Drop-ins are great if you have a quick question, especially related to resumes and cover letters. Um, they are staffed by undergraduate peer students who are trained in helping you with this. Right now, we are booked up about two weeks in advance, so if you have an immediate question and you need help because you're like, I see this application and it's due next week, I need help now, I would come to drop -ins. They are in person, in our office, um, we are in the student commons right by Chick-fil-A. So drop-ins are great for that kind of information, otherwise you can schedule in Handshake. I've included my name and my email address. If you can't remember how to schedule an appointment, how to get a hold of me, you're always welcome to email me and I can send you those directions to, to schedule a handshake. You can also always call our front desk at that phone number to get an appointment as well. And all of our resources, including guides and things like that, are available on our website, which is careers.sc.edu. Are there any questions you have about some of the resources that our office offers? And I will have to leave at 4.30, so I may not be able to stay for a longer Q&A, so if you have anything kind of brief and quick right now, So I'd like to start with Natasha um, and um, take it away. 
Thank you. So hello everyone, my name is Natasha, and like Professor Coverly said, I am an intern at the Richmond Circuit Court. Um, some of the tasks that I do, they really vary. Um, every day is different, which is something that I really love about my internship. Um, but some of the things that I do include watching criminal and civil cases, um, analyzing legal documents, and summarizing them. Um, meeting with judges, which I think it's really cool. It's a great networking opportunity. Um, and helping clerics and externs. Um, if you're not familiar with the term, externs are essentially current law students who are doing like an internship for graduate school um, on whatever they may need. So that could be like proofreading or maybe doing legal research, which I really like doing. Um, I found the job via um, the experiential learning newsletter that Professor Coverly sends out every week. Um, so please make sure to read those. Um, there are great opportunities on there, so I highly recommend taking a few minutes out of your Monday um, to read those things. Um, before applying for an internship or before even thinking about an internship, something that I heard all the time was that they're great for networking, which is true. Um, but I would like to highlight some things that I was not expecting to realize or find before um, I started working with the court. One of them is that it has served as like confirmation that studying something that I'm interested in and passionate about. Um, what I remember when I chose, so I'm a political science and business dual degree. Um, before I chose my major, something that I was nervous about was that I was going to be a junior or a senior and realized that I hated what I was studying. So my internship has served as like confirmation that I am on the right track. Um, and also, I feel more confident going into law school um, and I've realized that it's the right decision for me in terms of, I'm going to be completely honest here, law school is a big investment, at least for me. It's a big financial decision for me and my family, and knowing that um, I can see myself pursuing a law career um, after I graduate um, has taken some of the stress, um, you know, for me, and now I understand and see myself doing that in the future which is something that I am very grateful that um, when it comes to my internship, because it, it, it has helped me realize that. Um, and again, great networking. I've had the opportunity to meet um, with judges, um, lawyers, um, and I've been able to identify different careers in the law field that are not necessarily either being a judge or being a lawyer. Um, there are many different opportunities for people with um, law degrees out there, so it's been a great opportunity, and if you have any questions, please feel free to ask, and you're helping. Yeah. Thanks, and Vanessa. Awesome. Hi, everyone. My name is Vanessa. Um, as Professor Corbelli mentioned, over the summer, I did do two internships, one as governmental affairs intern and one with Senator Kane's office, but right now, um, I actually intern for the U.S. Department of Education. Um, and uh, through that, I want to work in education policy, and so through that I focus on teacher diversity and college and career readiness. And it's a lot of research and also collaborating with Congress and other federal external stakeholders. Um, and I also get to travel a lot, which is great. Like next weekend I have to go to New York. I'm lucky to go to New York because uh, we have to look at how different policy initiatives have been going in that state uh, surrounding educator diversity. Um, and I got the position because actually my governmental affairs intern, uh, internship over the summer, one of the policy analysts used to work for the department when Obama was in office, and I worked really closely with him, and he was able to reach out, um, and I got an interview, and then everything like that happened. So that's a perfect example of how you can leverage connections from your other internships to get to another one that's not necessarily posted. Um, I think, the hardest thing, and I guess the biggest advice I would give is, the first internship you get is always the hardest one because you have nothing. I know when I, it took me forever to actually decide to go out and apply because I felt like I had nothing on my resume. I would always say like, I have nothing. Like, I, I my resume's blank. Like, I don't know what to say, but it's not. I mean, a lot of us are in clubs. A lot of us do outside volunteering, and I think it's important to utilize that on your resume. Like, if you're a part of the Poli Sci Club, that's something you can put on there. Even if you're not the president, like you still collaborate, you still do things that are valuable in, in the workforce. And so adding that to your resume, a lot of, especially if you're an intern, they know that you need the experience, they know that you don't have much. So that first internship is always the hardest, but moving on from that, it just gets easier and you get to leverage the connections you use. Um, yeah. 
happy to answer any questions. Cool. Um, before we move into the formal Q&A, I just, just want to cover a couple of logistical issues. Thanks. Great. Great. Um, as noted, there are many different ways to find an internship. Uh, that's why it's hard to do a panel like this because uh, every field is a little different. Everybody's individual experience is going to be a little different. Some, some organizations have super formal processes and some have very informal processes. Um, and so um, my main recommendation on finding an internship is essentially plan in advance. Start now if you can. Um, there are times of the year when um, there are going to be more applications or more sort of announcements out there. Say sort of late October, early November is the time when a lot of spring internships are going to be discussed. March is the latest set of deadlines you're going to see for summer internships. But honestly, summer internship deadlines have already started. Um, the State Department's deadline was yesterday. <laughs> um, their email notification process failed for me. <laughs> uh, but uh, I may have uh, given them an email address. So, <laughs> um, you know, um, but that's just the State Department. Um, there are plenty of other organizations, though, that uh, you know, do management consulting or that are, have more formal internship experiences that are also going to have deadlines in early November, uh, maybe in December. So uh, you do need to, um, as noted, check regularly and during those heavy seasons, um, so July for fall internships, uh, October, November for spring internships, and at the latest March for uh, summer internships. Um, you might want to check a little bit more frequently as well. Um, so you want to uh, plan for the fact that these deadlines come up all the time. And you also need to give yourself enough time to fill out these applications. Um, you know, you have to invest time in coming up with your initial resume and your initial cover letter. And we'll have some workshops on doing those in you know, the late January time frame, a little bit closer to the summer application. At least I will. So, <laughs> we'll just like, wait, what? <laughs> uh, so we'll talk more about those at a, at a later time. Um, but, after, but even after you have those initial application materials, you need to spend time searching. You need to spend time, even if you, you don't see internships you like, all right, see what kind of qualifications people are looking for generally, and how, think of through how you can get those qualifications. And you need to spend time adapting your generic resume and your generic cover letter to the specific jobs you want to apply for. Um, other things to think about, I have down here, start applying your sophomore year. And I hope none of you are thinking, oh no, I'm a senior, what am I going to do? <laughs> um, there's never a wrong time to apply for an internship. Uh, but uh, and the stereotypical time to do an internship is the summer after your junior year. Um, but as noted, sometimes uh, to find the right internship, you need to uh, start a little early. So I just encourage students to think about this as early as possible. Not your first year, you've got plenty of other stuff going on, but definitely as a sophomore. Uh, if you are a senior, uh, now's a great time to think about academic year internships for this spring and to talk through um, alternate uh, types of internships that can be more job transition periods. And these are things that I'm happy to talk to you guys about as well. Um, last thing is that it's important to remember that uh, you both can and need to integrate your internship experiences with the rest of your academic plan. Um, if you're thinking about doing an academic year internship, and I do actually recommend that, um, uh, you can get course credit for it, which I'll explain for a second, in a second, but you also just need to make sure that you literally have enough time to work this out. And you can start thinking through and planning forward, okay, how do I want to have this experiential you know, time uh, count towards my degree? Cost is oftentimes the biggest reason why students don't apply for internships or do internships. You all have busy lives. Uh, you all are, need to get out there and make money. And uh, so I just wanted to make sure you guys were aware of a bunch of different funding opportunities that already exist for you. These are all for summer internships. Uh, right now we are working on finding academic uh, year funding uh, for students to uh, engage in experiential learning, whether it's research or study abroad or um, for internships, but right now there are several different scholarships that you as VCU students can apply for. So if, even if you need to take an unpaid internship, there may be an opportunity for you to find money from the university to pay for this. 
I'm not going to link on any of these, but I would just note that the deadlines tend to be in March, and you don't need to have um, finalized your internship to apply for most of them, but you do need to be well on the way to do that. Um, as I just mentioned, you can get course credit for your internship as well. Um, I quote unquote teach, mostly just supervise a uh, course, uh, Poly 493, where you can get one academic hour, credit hour, for every 50 hours that you do in an internship. Um, this is often a great way to actually incorporate that internship into your academic year. Um, most students will work about 150 hours for three credits. Um, that's you know about a little over 10 hours a week which is a very standard normal amount of time to spend on an internship. Um, the reason to do this, essentially, is to apply this towards your major and towards your degree. Uh, this is a good use of elective credits. So instead of taking a random course or a very theoretically oriented course that you might not be super interested in, you can uh, use uh, your internship, <laughs> not to, to expose my bias here. <laughs> um, you can do this internship, get the course credit for it, and uh, you know, ease up your calendar, especially that busy junior and senior year when you've got so many classes, so many writing classes, so much work to do. This can really help uh, ease your work. Um, let's see. There are a couple of things to just note here. You need to actually have been accepted as a foreign internship before you can apply to get this credit. This is not something that you just sign up for in the registration process. You get an internship, then you fill out a form. It's not like we reject a lot of people, but we just make sure that this is an acceptable internship. And, um, and then we arrange for the credit. Um, Nathan Bickett, supervisor, uh, is the best person to ask about the details on this program. Um, if you email Polly Advisor, uh, he will respond, he will send you the material, and offer you a little guide. to uh, give you all a little bit more detail on where you can find more information. So as we've noted, uh, finding internships is very much about being proactive and searching for what you're most interested in. That said, I do try to push out as much information as possible to you guys. So on Mondays, I've been sending out a regular newsletter, and uh, I try to keep it as concise as possible. So if you don't see something on there that you're super interested in, then uh, it's always worth just emailing me, asking, hey, what's going on? What, do you have? what else do you have? Um, as part of that, I am in the process, and by that I literally mean, oh, I forgot to set this up. Red screen. I'm in the process of setting up specific Google groups, or essentially just listservs, for specific areas of interest. So when I get 10 emails from political campaigns saying, would you like to intern? Do you have interns for me? I won't send it out to everyone because not everybody's interested in campaign work, but I will send it out to the elections and campaigns group. So I literally just set this up to, well, I literally got permission to do this from the VCU powers that be uh, today. So um, this is just getting started right now, but this will be a new opportunity for you to get more, more messages on different jobs that are out there. In addition, on this handout, uh, this, and you guys have to tell me if this doesn't work because um, I don't access Canvas on my phone and I don't want to, <laughs> but um, uh, this uh, QR code should bring you to this Canvas page um, for experiential learning and political science real large. This is also a work in progress, but what we have here are a bunch of four different topics that you might be interested in. What we have here is essentially the uh, results of my outreach and efforts. So if you are interested in Virginia politics specifically, I'll link you to the Wilder School program on the Virginia Assembly, which is a great uh, spring semester program uh, to actually work uh, as an intern for a uh, representative in the Virginia State Assembly. But I'll also connect to lobbying organizations that have taken VCU interns in the past. Um, a great uh, local uh, 
a legal research organization that is almost entirely staffed by VCU political science alumni. Um, Virginia Democrats, we're still working on finding the Republicans uh, for the state party. Um, it's <laughs> not as easy as you might expect sometimes to make these connections, but I'm working on it, I promise. So uh, we'll ha I'll have for you guys as much information on different organizations as possible. These aren't always going to be immediate openings, but this is a way to just get ideas on the different types of organizations that are out there that might be of interest to you. Um, once again, though, I do want to just encourage everybody to reach out to me. Just let me know. Uh, my email address is down here at the bottom of the uh, handout. Um, let me know what you're interested in. Uh, schedule you know, 20, 30 minutes to come talk to me about what your specific interests are, and we can start think brainstorming and thinking through what might actually make sense for you. Um, both um, based on your interests, with your time at VCU, and um, what you actually like and dislike. Um, that's about it. What questions do you guys have? I think I have covered. What can I do for you? Any last questions from Melinda before she goes? So that's where you need to start asking yourself, okay, remote experiences, not super fun, 
But um, summer internships are very competitive. Do I want to consider doing a, a fall or spring internship? Won't be as competitive. I'll have a better chance of actually getting this job and getting something on my resume so then when I apply for a summer internship, I'll have that link. reasoning, 
in your cover letter why you actually want to do this particular internship, that's what's important here. And that's why I don't recommend dozens of applications because then a scattershot approach, it rarely actually works. Uh, stretching works, but uh, just random applications don't. Um, my piece of advice um, that I would say is I thought I learned my lesson last summer, but obviously I did. So every for my internship, I have to go to DC. So every Tuesday and Thursday, I go to DC. Every Tuesday and Thursday until the end of the spring, I have to go to DC, and I live in Richmond. So I didn't think about that when I over the summer when I was like applying for it or like doing the whole process. And so now I take 15 credits. It's a lot. I'm exhausted like every day because I have to go to DC <laughs> every single like twice a week. And so definitely it's a big thing to, to try to work it into your schedule and like definitely for the spring, because um, my the internship ends in the spring, so I'm definitely going to fix that. So for the spring and then same thing, especially if you want to do uh, like like for example, working for Tim Kane's office was way a way bigger of a workload than I anticipated, and I had two internships. I was working full time. I did 25 hours each or whatever, 20 hours each, and so then I was. It was just a lot at one time, and so even though that was over the summer and I wasn't taking any classes, it was still a huge workload. Um, and so I think the biggest thing is just working it through your schedule as possible um, and making sure that you're not overloading yourself. Yeah, you both are a little overloaded. <laughs> you're doing amazing. Um, what questions do you guys have? You're ready to come talk to me <laughs> and find your internship? <laughs> How many of you are thinking about internships for the spring? Excellent. Course credit is, the, is part of the way to avoid that taking 15 credits plus your internship. <laughs> so um, that's one way that you can make that work a little, your schedule work a little bit better. Um, although a commute time is always a problem, um, it, it's never going to go away. What about summer internships? Yeah. Uh, so that's a much more traditional uh, time to do these things, and that, that's where you need to balance, okay, how much money do I need to earn over the summer versus how much time can I spend on an internship? Uh, again, you still need to think about balancing your time, or do you need to take any class or things along those lines? But you can, you can also get academic credit for a summer internship. You can take it as a summer class, but then you do have to pay for uh, tuition uh, for, that, uh, for those credits. Uh, that's why sometimes people get frustrated, wait, am I paying for my internship? Um, you're paying for your degree <laughs> and using it to get internship experience. It really is about your time, it's not about the money. So it's a little about the money. Anything else? Yes. Did you guys have? So when I interviewed for uh, my internship, um, it was a very informal interview, which I was not expecting. I thought, since you know I'm working with the court, which is a government organization, I thought it was going to be very formal. Um, but one thing that really helped me um, is that I sat down with my dad and I told him, "Ask me internship questions." Like, ask me about my experience, what I like to do, what I don't like to do, um, past work or like extracurricular experiences. Um, I remember one question that they asked me was um, so I am a TA for Honors 200, which is a rhetoric writing class. And so I remember that they asked me about that and how that, you know, essentially has shaped my experience at ICU. And so I was able to connect the fact that I took the class. And then I presented at a research conference in Wisconsin to now being a TA for the class. And so I don't want to say like prepare your answers in advice in advance, but kind of like um, you know sit down with like your roommate or maybe like a friend and ask them to ask you questions about what you have done here at VCU. Um, I think that would be very beneficial. And you know um, you do kind of have to prepare your answers in advance because you don't I feel like the worst thing that could happen is that they ask you something and you don't know how to respond um so don't like memorize your answers but kind of like reflect and think about what you have done and how you can provide a um, very thorough answer um, yeah 
I would, I would have to agree. Um, I, that's a great question. I actually think one of the most, you can apply and like it's a big thing to get your resume to look correct and professional um, and for them to actually say we want to set up an interview, but like if I had a dollar every time I fumbled an interview, I'd be literally so rich. Like no joke. It, like, interviewing is such an important skill that you have to learn and I, the worst thing that can happen is for them to ask you a question you have no idea and you're just pulling stuff out of your ass. That's happened to me on so many occasions and it took me to have to sit down and like actually say, okay, how do I need to do an interview? Because I obviously don't know what I'm doing. So my biggest thing, I actually would say to extensively research whatever organization, whatever member you're working for, know everything about them, like stalk them basically. You need to know everything. That's what I would say, especially if you're gonna work for a member. Like one of my friends, she's from Virginia, but she wanted to work for AOC in the fall. She never has even been to New York. So her big thing is that she had to figure out how was she going to actually help the district, and she had to know everything about the district. Like, what do the demographics look like? What are the major companies there? What are the major political issues that exist there? And how do you specifically want to help the district? And so, specifically, the questions that I have seen a lot, um, the first question is always tell me about yourself. If that's a really important one to know uh, what to say and how to start your interview off on a good foot and not fumble through it. Um, a lot of the time they'll ask you what brought you to the position or what brought you to the company and that's where you can show off all of your knowledge that you've learned, that you've researched. Um, other questions, I actually have never gotten what's your greatest strength. I don't know if, <laughs> I've never asked yeah, that. Greatest strength never I've never asked that, I'll, I'll get to what I ask in a second. Never. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they ask about how my experience relates back to the position and how, and how it can help me in the future. Um, and then overall what qualifications I have, or a lot of the time if they actually do look through my resume, they'll ask me specific points about um, like for working for the department. Like I, for the department, I had to go through five rounds of interviews, which was terrifying. Yeah. Um, <laughs> which was absolutely, like, I was shaking every time. But um, uh, they asked me a lot about what I did in my internships, and that's another thing I would say when you get an internship, try to have something tangible that you get out of it. Whether it be a policy memo, a blog that you got published, have something that you can take to your next internship and say, hey, I collaborated with the National Children's Law Center on this blog, and you can see what I look like. I mean, what I write like, or whatever. Um, that would, that's probably the biggest thing, is just having specific things that you can note and showing why specifically you're the best candidate. Um, and also, I would touch, like, like, in the interview, they asked me a bunch of stuff about what I did for Kane. Like, like way more than I expected. And so just prepare for that, I would say. Um, I personally write out every every interview I've had like moving forward when I stop bombing them. I've, ri I've wrote out exactly what I wanted to say and I don't have it in front of me, but for me, when I write it out, I can go back to the specific points in my head and know, hey, if you ask me why I want this internship, I can talk about my passion for education and how I worked on the bill with Kane. Um, so yeah, hopefully that was helpful. Yeah. Um, one thing to remember is that if they are interviewing you, they've already decided that they're interested in you. Um, they don't usually interview everybody for a job. Um, oftentimes, what is going to get you to the interview process is your cover letter. And so, uh, whenever I was at, at where did I hire interns? So my first few jobs after college, I worked on Capitol Hill, so I hired internships for Senator Kennedy's healthcare office and things like that, and for um, the representative that I worked for afterwards. Um, I also sort of hired internships when I worked for the State Department um, as an American diplomat. That's a very structured process, so I never got to see the, the equivalent of a cover letter, um, but I would usually only be handed like three resumes that I could then choose from and decide who I wanted to actually hire. I never got to have them work for me because the process is so long that you can't always get clearances for people, but anyway, <laughs> um, that's, a different, that's a different issue. So that would be why they have been continually moving up their application to apply for State Department internships, in case you were wondering. Okay, um, so what I would usually ask is essentially, um, so often I would essentially be starting with softballs. I know that the people I talk to are um, uh, nervous, and so I want to make the people I'm speaking to as comfortable as possible to make sure that I get the actual person that I'm interested in hiring, and not the, just the one who um, comes off best with a first impression, the actual best person. 
Uh, so I usually would start, for, start with softballs, and for me a softball question is, why do you want this job? Um, and that can be a hard one to answer. Um, I admit when I was closer to your guys' age, I would write down all my answers. Uh, I would write down like specifically the speech that I would like to give on this issue or that issue. I don't do that anymore because I realize I actually don't perform best when I do that. Um, when I write things down, that's, okay, now that's the version I'm going to say that I start stumbling over, oh wait, but I forgot to say this and I forgot to say that. So I usually will have like a note card with me. These are the three or four main points that I want to make sure I make. What is my story? Uh, because everybody has their own story about what, where they are in their lives, what they're actually doing. I've made weird career you know, movements here and there. Doesn't matter um, how weird your resume is, how weird your personal experience is. Do you have a story that explains how you're going through that path? Like what you actually want to do, why you're making the choices that you have made. Uh, or um, how you reacted when something you know, completely unexpected you threw you off, uh, off your plan. Um, you know, that kind of experience, that kind of story is exactly what people are looking for. They want people who are going to be responsible, who are going to be resilient, who they can count on to do whatever job that they're looking for. And so anything that you can, uh, any anecdote that you have that can really explain that, any story about your life is going to be great on that front. So, you know, what is your story? How have you made that decision? Uh, why you want this particular job. That's another key point to remember, uh, because again, um, if you can't explain that clearly, well, uh, okay, you're not that interesting anymore. And then honestly, what I would usually do is I would choose something off somebody's resume that looked interesting. Um, you put everything on your resume for a reason, and so again, when I ask you something, oh, tell me more about this random thing that's on your resume, that's what exactly what they're doing. They're, they're trying to see, they're not testing you for what's on your resume, they just want to ask you more about your experiences here, how you present yourself verbally, uh, and to get a better understanding of what you're doing. So um, we, uh, along with um, resume workshops in the, uh, in the sort of January timeframe, uh, well, I'm also planning on uh, scheduling some interview workshops. I don't know how much like one-on-one -on -one practice we can do, but that would be the ideal, is one-on-one -on -one reviews of resumes and one-on-one -on -one reviews with sort of practice interviews. And that's like, essentially the last thing I would say on this question, is that you don't have to have a job application in order to do an interview. Informational interviews are a fantastic way to start networking and to start building your interviewing skills, to start being less nervous about the actual process. And the great thing there is that you can totally bomb an informational interview and eh, you're like, oh well, <laughs> um, you're gonna be a little embarrassed, uh, you're gonna get over it, and it might be a missed opportunity, but it's not like it's actually a missed job opportunity. Um, so uh, it's great practice where you, and literally, this is how I got this job. I was like, okay, I would want to teach, I want to be in Virginia, I've, I was in North Carolina before here, I'm like, oh, North Carolina is weird, I want to be back in Virginia, which is where I'm from, <laughs> uh, being a little closer to my family and things along those lines. Um, let me see what kind, what universities are out there, if anybody might be interested in hiring me. This is not how you find an academic job, by the way. <laughs> um, and I emailed the chairs of departments, I emailed Richmond, I emailed VCU, um, uh, William and Mary, um, Mary Washington, things along those lines. Hey, uh, this is who I am. I was wondering if I could talk to you a little bit about your department. Uh, you know, talk about my experience and see if there's any way I could we could uh, uh, be a match. And everybody got back to me uh, because everybody they don't don't necessarily have permanent jobs, but they do need temporary hires, <laughs> and so they're always looking to build their networks and build their contacts too. People respond to cold emails to cold calls much more than you think they will. And um, again, what's the worst thing that could happen? Oh no, they don't get back to you. Um, you know, sometimes that is going to happen. Uh, but again, there's very little cost. It's not like that actually hurts you. So it's worth a shot. Is anyone here interested in working for a member either at, like in the GA or in Congress for an internship? Mm -hmm. Do you have any specific questions for them that I can ask? Um, I guess just like, are there any specific ways you would recommend like tailoring in your resume to working in for a member of Congress? Yeah, that's, I don't know if this is a good thing actually, but mm -hmm. every time I apply for a job, I change my resume. Yeah, no, that's a very good thing. Okay, that's exactly good. what you should do. Okay, um, so a lot of my, a lot of the things that I've done in my internship experience are policy related, and so when I want to work for 
either the GA or for Congress, I want to show them that I have working knowledge of Congress or the GA. And so I tailor a lot of the things less like I wrote a policy memo, which I will add on there because it's a good thing, but more so like I, like for Senator Kane, I um, did the health committee, so I knew I was focused on all the bills in health and writing all the committee reports and also tracking our bills that were going through there. And so I write that specifically so they know, I know how committees work, I know how to be on time, and I know how to talk to the clerk. I know different things like that, and so specifically, showing that you have working knowledge of whatever that you're trying to do, even if you've never done that before. Because even if you haven't, you can show that you, you can get over that learning curve, and because it is it is a big learning curve. That's also a great reason to intern, especially for if you want to work for Congress or the GA, is that you can look at a job application all day, but until you're really there, there's so many little nuances and things that you like, have to do that you'll never know until you do it, or have to intern to do it. Um, and then the other thing in terms of not necessarily resume, but for interviewing is again just knowing the district and the member back and forth. You should know all of their committees. You should know their district. You should know. You should literally know more about them than they do. Like, you should know every single thing about them because they'll they'll ask. It's very ambitious. I admit I did not quite prepare quite so much. Really? <laughs> oh my gosh! For, they asked me when Tim Kim was born in my interview. I was like, I don't know. I won't lie to you. I have no idea. That's so weird. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I swear to you. I That's a bit much, I have to admit. Yeah. Um, but uh, these are competitive internships, so you never know. Um, what I recommend is, um, just to build off what Vanessa was saying, is that um, you can demonstrate that experience and what you can put on your resume is a, a lot of different things. Sometimes it's going to be a class you took where, oh, um, I wrote this paper, and here is, uh, here's this analytical paper that I did, and this is how it can apply to this particular job. Maybe you had to write a memo for a class. Um, maybe you could take my class next semester while I'll teach you how to write a memo. <laughs> it's a foreign policy. Um, uh, maybe it's an extracurricular activity where, again, you don't need to be the leader of an organization to still be involved and engaged. So maybe you help them set up this particular event. A lot of what interns do, especially on the Hill, is um, showing up at events, making sure that everything is organized the way it's supposed to be, um, you know, maybe scheduling speakers, things along those lines. There's a lot of event planning and a lot of political work. And so doing that in student organizations is a great way to get started. And that's something that, again, that you can just put on your resume. Um, let's say you are a uh, server. Um, you have amazing skills in terms of customer service and speaking to people, um, managing conflict, managing problems. Uh, so if, if you think about your life experience and your work experience in that way, that is how you're going to present it uh, and how it's going to be valuable to an office. Uh, so it's a, um, and the career services is great at doing this writ large. Um, I can also help you tailor it, to, tailor it to specific political messages. So if you want help on your resume, what I usually recommend is that you go to career services first get kind of the formatting stuff correct, uh, make sure you've taken care of all your typos, so then come talk to me and I'll be like, okay, here's what these kind of employers are actually going to look for in terms of those, uh, the things that, that, that you say. Another piece of advice I have for you guys is um, something that I did in my very first semester here at ICU is work on my resume. And so I remember, I don't know how many appointments I scheduled with career services, um, and they helped me like work on my resume and make it make make sure it was like good for like internships and not, not even just internships but also like jobs like if you so I'm a dance teacher I danced my entire life and now I work as a dance teacher they helped me work on my resume so and that resume got me my current job so make sure your resume looks good and also work on your LinkedIn make sure it's like nowadays they do check that and that's true they would check it I, I've never found a job through LinkedIn but having that profile is important I've they actually had look yeah, I actually had a friend of mine look my LinkedIn profile up and be like, oh, hey, do you want to um, come be a consultant for me to do this? Um, yeah. For reference, I hate LinkedIn. Yeah, I, I hate it too. I but, refuse to use it. But if people, yeah, so either be on and good or don't be on. Yeah. <laughs> Never. Yeah. Um, what's the resume? What's it about? Resumes. Oh, uh, the other thing that's important about internships is to think laterally. So if we think about working for a member of Congress, we think, oh, we're going to be in D.C. and it's going to be in the summer and I'm going to do this really interesting experience working for Tim Kaine. You know what? All these offices, they also have local offices. So Tim Kaine and uh, Senator Warner, 
Mark Warner. Mark. Uh, thank you, Mark Warner. Yeah. <laughs> And so I'm old, and there used to be a John Warner too. And that's why, and I still have issues with that, <laughs> just remembering which is which. Um, so uh, and Mark Warner, they both have offices here in Richmond. They've also got offices around the state. Your local representative, both for at the national level and at the state level, is going to have an office in your home district, uh, relatively close to where you are. And constituent services are an important thing that every representative does. So a great way to start is to okay, let's work for their. Uh, Richmond office or their local office first. It is not the sexiest work that's out there, uh, constituents are, but I, we've all done constituent services. I've done constituent services a lot too. <laughs> uh, it's kind of, uh, and again, it, it builds a great understanding of what your rep, the constituents, what the people actually care about, or at least the people who are contacting offices. So you build up that experience, uh, you get an understanding, a broader understanding of what's actually going on, and then you translate that experience into uh, a bigger, uh, sexier, fancier internship. That's another thing talking about members. If I think if anyone wants to work, even for the GA, um, see as much research you can do because every every the GA is the General Assembly. Yeah, thank you. That's the, so that's the Virginia Assembly. Yeah, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Thank um, you. <laughs> every member does their internships differently. Like I I got to do like legislative stuff stuff with Kane because I made it clear that that was my priorities, but I could also give now like a capital tour with my eyes closed. I've answered phones, I've given coffee. You and so there was Tim Kane has he's one of like a senator, so he has a, a huge team. And so half of his team were like law students who had GDs or JDs and everything like that. And so they were really not happy to be getting coffee and doing capital tours and getting copies of bills and resolutions and things. So it's important to realize that it's also, it, it's, it is nice and you do have a lot of like great things and it's an incredible opportunity, but also I've had my fair share of leaks just answering yeah. phones and being yelled at. And so. having the positive attitude and demonstrating that not only are you willing to do those sorts of things, but you are able to do them well and responsibly is the only way to move from answering the phone to writing memos. Um, you're never going to be given the fancier responsibility in an office if you can't demonstrate that I, if I give you this random thing, you will get it done. Uh, I can trust you enough for that. Um, and uh, I at least would always, it's not a formal test, but I would always start my interns out with the simple things and then see what more complicated things I can do afterwards. It's just, uh, uh, do you have the basic responsibility? Hey guys, it's after five o'clock and I don't want to uh, keep our guests here, um, or you, <laughs> but I'm here at your service, so you can come ask me questions now, or um, just come see me in my office hours. <laughs>